are important. You belong. You have a destiny and a future. World Impact Celebration Church Online is a spiritual family of believers from all over the world where you can discover your purpose and grow in the grace of Jesus Christ. You will hear teachings by Dr. Peter Youngren, Pastor Nathan Thurber, and others. You will participate in worship, prayer, and taking the Lord's communion every week. You will enjoy video testimonies and interviews from around the world. No matter where you live, your prayer request will be included in every service. This will truly be an international online church. Wherever you live, from Southeast Asia to Europe, North and South America, Africa, and Australia, this can be your spiritual home. All over the world, I meet people who ask me if there's a way that they can participate in the services from the Toronto Celebration Church. Well, we're offering something much more than just a streaming service. This is a full-fledged online church for you. The World Impact Celebration Church Online is a place where you can find a spiritual family, a place of belonging, and where you can grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Set your calendar for 1030 a.m. New York time. That's 430 p.m. Central European time and 1030 p.m. for most countries in Southeast Asia. Heaven will include people of every culture, nationality, and ethnicity, and this will be a foretaste of heaven. World Impact Celebration Church Online is a place where you belong, where you will be nurtured, and where you can find your destiny. Toronto Celebration Church is a story of God's love drawing people from different backgrounds, cultures, even religions to be empowered to live their maximum life and to serve the community and the world. When I came here, I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand, I had a walker. But when I came to TICC, I was totally and completely miraculously healed. TICC is... Uh family for us, for me and my husband. Uh, one of the best things that I really like about TICC is definitely the youth ministry or the youth program. And I'm truly blessed here uh, by the simple message of God's unconditional love, grace and mercy. I found the church I've always dreamed of. A church is not about building. It is about people. People from every part of society, young and old. People from Asia, Europe, the islands of the sea. Africa and across the Americas, together creating a better society, because to personally know God's love is the key to the ultimate life, and in a constant pursuit to find ways to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to Toronto and Canada, we believe that the best is yet to come. 
Welcome Celebration Church family. It is so good to be with you today. Pastor Peter is going to be joining us. We've got ministry highlights that are coming up, uh, time of communion. So we've got a lot of great things planned for you. Uh, just as we, before we started today, I was thinking about the scripture in Psalms where it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Today, perhaps you feel like you're going through a dark moment. Maybe you feel discouraged. I want to encourage you that you're walking through, that you're not staying there but you're walking through and that no evil will come near you why because of what Jesus has done so take courage in that today that you are walking through why because his rod and his staff is with you so God is there with you he's for you he's not against you so today why don't you just enter in to whatever God has for you receive everything that he has for you he's got good things for you let's go to the worship team and enter into worship through music up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
making intercession for you and for me. Aren't we glad about that today? Aren't we glad about that today? Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands together. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We celebrate your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. The moon and stars, they went. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Ooh. yeah. One final breath he gave as heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave. The war on death was waged. Yeah. The power of hell forever broke. And then what happened? Then the ground.
Well, I tell you, that is wonderful. Because he lives, we live also. And I know you're sensing that in your home and your, wherever you're watching right now. We just finished Easter weekend and we remembered how he died, but he rose again. And his life, eternal life, is now is, is available to us today. And when we, when we remember uh, Jesus, we remember his purpose for coming to save us, to, to, to redeem us, to bring us into his love and into his forgiveness and to give us new life. And today we're talking about great in the cause. And when I speak of the cause here today, I'm talking of the cause of, of Jesus Christ, the cause of why he came to earth, of why he died on the cross, of why he rose from the dead, and why he ascended back to the Father, the cause of Christ, the cause of bringing every man, every boy, and every girl on planet earth, every person, all eight billion of us, into the saving knowledge of his love, of his forgiveness, and to give us each new life uh, through his life. That's the cause that, is on the, that I'm referring to, that's on the screen behind me, great in the, the cause. And the cause of Jesus Christ, it is truly a great, it is a magnificent cause. Eight billion people, there's a lot of people. And the cause of Christ is that every person understands his love and his forgiveness. But not only did Jesus come uh, with this purpose of saving mankind but Jesus with that particular cause but he also after his resurrection and before he ascended back to the father he gave us he gave his disciples at that time and he gave us today the same cause the cause of preaching the gospel of cause of making his name known and his love and his grace available to every man woman boy and girl and the scriptures we call it the great commission Today we're calling it the great cause, but the great commission, and it's truly great, it's truly magnificent, it's wonderful, eight billion people. And we recognize today as believers in Christ that it is our cause. It is our cause to build His church. It is our cause to make His name known far and wide. It is our cause, and it's for that cause, the cause of Christ, that we sacrifice, and we, 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 through hardships and turmoil, we hold on to that cause, the cause of Jesus Christ. And Paul, in the Scriptures, he talks about this cause. He says, Philippians chapter 1 and 13, he says, I, I pray, he said that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ Jesus has become well known. Philemon 1 and 23 says, greetings to you from Epaphras, my fellow prisoner, here in the cause of Christ. And so Paul acknowledges that he, he suffers hardships and difficulties for the cause of Christ, the cause of Christ. It's a great cause. And it's why I believe in this world we live in today, one in eight Christians, one in eight Christians today suffer persecution for their faith. That's 340 million people. That's a lot of Christians today suffer persecution. Why? For the cause of Christ. They say in this year that we live in 2020, now 2021, that due to the COVID-19, persecution has risen. People have used it as an excuse to, to increase persecution on Christians, but we have held on to the cause. And these one in eight Christians, for the cause of Jesus Christ. It's a great cause. And they say that we know instinctively that we as human beings, we need a cause greater than ourselves. We need a cause that we can sacrifice for, that we can serve in. We need this cause. It gives us purpose. It gives us a sense of destiny. And our cause today as believers is to advance the cause of Jesus Christ. And in that cause, we live truly great lives. We live great lives in, in the cause. And I think of in the scriptures a man named Abraham, and God called Abraham to a great cause. He called Abraham to be the father of many nations. It was a great cause. And it's interesting that in Genesis chapter 12, uh, the scripture says in verse 2, it, God makes Abraham a promise. In other words, God calls Abraham to a great cause, but notice God says, first of all, Abraham, I'm going to do something for you. He says, in that cause, I'll make your name great, I'll, or I'll make you in a great nation, and I'll bless you and I'll make your name great. In other words, God's saying, I'm going to make you great. I'll make your influence great. I'll make you great. I'll bless you greatly. And then, why? So that you can be a blessing. In other words, for the cause, God says, you need to be great. You need to be great, Abraham, so that you can complete and fulfill uh, this great cause. 
And it's no different today. God has given us a great cause, the cause that every man, woman, boy, and girl understand his saving grace to build his church. It's a great cause. But likewise, God says of you and I today, he wants you to be a great person, to live with great faith, great love, great hope, to be great in spirit. God needs a great you. And I would also say as a pastor of this church, God, this church needs a great you, great in faith, great in love, great in spirit, great in, great in hope. God needs us to be great, to fulfill this great commission. I see in the scriptures a man named David, a famous, a famous man. He became King David, of course. But he found a great cause to commit his life to. You could say he found greatness within that cause. At one point, he was a shepherd boy, youngest boy in his family. And he was looking after his dad's sheep. His brothers had all gone off to battle. They were fighting that, you know, they were the great warriors. He was just stuck in the, in the shepherd's field, tending sheep. His dad, but then his dad said, you know, your brothers have been fighting this battle too long. Take them some food. So David takes them some food, and when he gets to the battlefield, he gives his brothers the food, but then he starts to hear something. He hears a giant, a Philistine giant named Goliath, taunting the Hebrews, taunting his brothers and all the Hebrew army. Uh, and he saw how when, the, when this giant Goliath would taunt them, the, his brothers and all the Hebrew armies, even the great Saul, would all cower in their tents in fear. They'd run away in fear. And he heard all this playing out. And watch this, 1 Samuel chapter 17. David said to the men who were standing by him, uh, 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 he said, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and rids, the, rids Israel of this disgrace? In other words, he says, this is a disgrace. You are, we are people, we are covenant people. We are people, uh, you know, of God. This is disgraceful, he says. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he dared to defy the armies of the living God? And then I love in verse 29, watch this, he says, David says, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? He recognized that something wasn't right. In other words, something arose within him. And in that moment, maybe he had made it before, but we see it visibly. David made a commitment to the cause of the kingdom of God. David committed to that. And you know, David could have easily said, this isn't my battle. You know, I'm just a shepherd's boy. I wasn't even, taught, I wasn't even trained. I don't have a sword. I'm not, in the, I'm not even in the army. He could have said that. He could have said, this is not my battle. But something arose within him. And we see in David a commitment to the cause of the kingdom of God. And we see three things. The commitment to that cause, it released in David great passion. Oh, I tell you, passion gives purpose. Passion gives a sense of destiny. You know, a person without passion, it's kind of, it's like a life not worth living. I mean, we all want passion, but passion is found in commitment to the cause. And I've discovered even in, in pastoring in this church, I can think of two individuals. I can think of a lot of you, by the way, but I think of two for sake of time, you know, who are such passionate, energetic people, but they're also two of the most committed people I know. One is 83 years old. And I think of her, whenever I talk to her, if she sees a need, she says, what can I do about it, Nathan? What can I do about it? She's committed to the cause of Christ. 83 years old and put, would put a lot of young people to shame in her passionate energy level. I think of a young professional in our church who, you know, could so easily be focused on their career and all that type and all that stuff. And that's a good thing, by the way. I mean, we need to advance in our careers, but at the same time is committed to the cause, sacrificing time and energy. But, but again, one of the most energetic, joyful, uh, passionate people well, I know, I tell you, and I'm talking about a lot of volunteers here at our church, but committed to the cause. And in the commitment to the cause of Jesus Christ, I tell you, the spirit of Christ rises up within us. We begin to live that kind of overcoming life. And I tell you, you know, in 2020 and now 2021, that's why this church family, you know, we could have easily just said, we're going to just wait to ride it out, ride the storm out, and then we'll worry about the cause. We'll, we'll just try to hunker down and wait it out. But I tell you, last year, we, that's, not the, since, that's not been our attitude. When I say our, I mean you and I, all of us collectively together. No, we said we're not going to lay back. Not only are we not going to reduce our outreach and our commitment to the cause, we're going to double up. And so we doubled our missions given. We've been talking about that to reach new people. But we would have had every excuse to don't would have blamed us. But I tell you, commitment to the cause. And it's released a passion and energy and, and all the members here at Celebration Church. It's wonderful. And I see it secondly in David. A commitment to the cause. It released great faith. Oh, I tell you, released great faith. I mean, David saw the risk. Goliath was very risky. 
Uh, but, 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 but David also recognized that he, and all the others, by the way, had a bigger covenant, and it released a great faith. David had this overcoming faith. And listen, it, it, you know, David wasn't more li- aligned for, that, for, the, for, the, for faith than the others. David was in the same covenant as Saul, same covenant as his brothers. Uh, they all had the same opportunity, but David was simply willing. He was simply willing, and in the willingness we see a release of great faith. We, I mean, David didn't even have a sword. He wasn't even in the army, but he was simply willing. All, they all had the same opportunity, but the others were filled with excuses. And there'll always be excuses till the cows come, till the day we die. There will, there will be endless excuses if we wish not to be committed to the cause. But David, he recognized something's not right. This is a shame. This is a disgrace. So he rose up. He made that commitment. But in that, we see a release of great faith. And I tell you what, in 2021, our covenant with Christ, our covenant is that God is bigger. It's bigger than any fear. It's bigger than financial setback. It's bigger than, than any virus. It's bigger than illness and sickness and disease. I tell you, and I tell you, you know, sometimes we think, well, I'm not a, such a spiritual person. I'm not a person of great faith. No, notice it simply took a, a willingness, a commitment to the cause. And I think of, you know, I, I don't like to share a story like this because you just say, oh, well, you're just a preacher. That's why it works for you. But no, it's not at all. Not at all. If you know me, I'm not a person who walks around, you know, just shout note scriptures on my sleeves, you know, and, and, and walking around like that. But I tell you, you know, last November, and I, short, I told this a little bit of this story previously, but last November when they came out with an announcement that if my children, uh, and by the way, I have an infant, and I have a young toddler, and so they're, you know, when they're in the house, they're all consuming, and so they go to daycare, and when they said last November, I think it was, if they have even a runny nose, they're not going to daycare. Now, I wish I could say that I had such great faith that my kids never had runny noses, but if you, they did, and if you know kids in daycare, they pretty much live with runny noses, 24/7. So again, it's not. I'm not saying I'm such a such a wonderful person, but I tell you, in November when they made this announcement, I thought I'm. I have a cause. Uh, you know, I, I'm a pastor, and by the way, my cause is no greater than yours. We're all part of the cause in different ways. But I thought I have a cause, and I can't take all this time. My kids, you know, kids live with runny noses. I can't just, I, I have to be here at the, I have to work. I've got, we've got, we've got, uh, you know, commitments to the, you know, the, the different language groups that we've been reaching out to. We've got commitments to all the, you know, the people in our church. We've got so many commitments in this cause. I can't just take, I can't just, you know, cower down and just, not about cowering, but just, to, you know, I can't, I have a cause. And something arose within me and said, I'm not accepting this. I'm not, you know, it's not that I don't love my kids, but I, I you know, on the weekends, that's great, but I have a cause. And so I tell you, something arose. And again, it's not, I'm not saying I'm such a great person because I've, I didn't do this before him. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. But I said, something arose that I, I have a purpose. I have a cause. I can't be stuck home all the time. So every, and I tell you, we've done it ever, ever since that day in November. We, I take the hands of my children and we'd pray in the name of Jesus, they be well. And I tell you, to this day, they haven't missed a day of daycare. And I'm not bragging on me. I'm not saying anything, or Megan, or anything of that nature. And, and you know, if they get sick and have to you know, stay home from daycare tomorrow, I'm not going to get all into condemnation or guilt. Like, you understand what I'm saying. You understand our message. But I tell you, when there's a commitment to the cause, things greater than yourself begin to arise. I don't consider myself such a great person of faith. But when there's a commitment to the cause, there's a release of that which you didn't even know that you had. And I tell you, I know that's rising up you you're committed to the cause thirdly we see in David he great expectations arose within his heart I tell you he expected God to come through when he faced Goliath and by the way he expected in himself the ability to defeat defeat Goliath because he understood God had equipped him and I tell you in Christ Jesus we are more than conquerors you have that way you have a covenant with God and in Christ you are more than a conqueror you have everything that you need to have big expectations and I I challenge each one of us in 2021 don't say Set small expectations for your family, for your finances, for your health. I'm just going to wait it up. No, have big expectations. Have big expectations. Not average in finance. Oh, I don't think I could expand this year. No, you can expand. Have big expectations. Why? The kingdom, the cause needs you. Remember, this is all for the cause. Abraham, God said, I'll make you great for the cause, to be a blessing. The cause of Christ. I explained that cause at the beginning of our sermon. God needs this church. 
church needs you to prosper financially. This church, God's kingdom, the cause of Christ, needs you to be healthy and strong. The cause of Christ needs to, you to be an effective witness and minister. And so I tell you, you say, well, I, don't, I can live without an increase in that area. I can do without that. Well, the cause can't. The cause of Christ stirs us up and says, we can't live small lives. We've got to live big lives with big expectations. Secondly, I see in the scriptures a man named Nehemiah. And Nehemiah is another person who found a cause and found greatness in the cause. We're talking about great in the cause today. He was a cupbearer. He was a slave to a foreign king. He wasn't a great person of influence or wealth. And yet he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were in disrepair, falling down. Now, at that time, again, Nehemiah was a slave thousands of miles away from Jerusalem. And so he could have so easily said, well, it's not my problem. I got my own problems, and I'll list them for you here, one by one by one. He was a slave. He had all kinds of reasons and problems, and he so easily could have said, let someone else deal with it. There's other people better positioned, better skilled, better qualified, somebody else, but that wasn't his attitude. He was committed to the cause. And that commitment, again, commitments cause us to do things maybe we wouldn't normally do. The commitment to the cause caused Nehemiah to take bold action, risky action. He asked the king, again, he's a slave, but he asked the king, number one, king, can I have some time off? Uh, okay. But then number two, he had more requests. He said, oh, and by the way, can I have a letter of protection? When I'm traveling back, I want a letter of your protection over me. I mean, it took, some, it took some serious boldness, right? But then like one of those infomercials we see on TV, but wait, there's more. This is Nehemiah. He asked for a third, a third request. Can you imagine? I mean, such boldness, but a commitment to the cause will cause you to do things you wouldn't normally do. And he said, I, but I, and I don't have anything to rebuild the walls. King, would you give me the supplies? And you know what? The king gave them to him. In fact, Nehemiah described it this way, Nehemiah 2.8, the king granted them to me because the good hand of my God was on me. If Nehemiah in the old covenant could have that expectations of the good hand, do you not believe that the good hand of God is upon, I mean, we preach it every Sunday here at Celebration Church, that grace abounds towards us. Do you not think the grace of God is the good hand of God? I mean, I tell you, we see in Nehemiah commitment to the cause, number one, released great grace in his life. Great grace. I mean, what if Nehemiah hadn't asked? But he asked. And we understand from the scriptures that God gives grace for every need. Every need. And if you're in a challenge not of your own making, then he'll give grace for that challenge. But I tell you, there's also something we learn here. We are able to take on needs and challenges of others that's what Nehemiah did, and expect his grace to supply for that need. I tell you, it's wonderful and it is beautiful how the grace of God supplies for every need that we face. Uh, and and in, it's so wonderful. And that's why we as a church family in 2021, we didn't have to take on these new initiatives of doubling our missions or, for example, the new initiatives that we talked about last week of helping persecuted Christians. That, uh, that, that We didn't have to take that on, but we understand that when we take on it, take on a need of others, there's supply for that need. And I tell you, individually, I think even as my wife and I annually, when we take, when we look at our budget and decide what can we do, we, we challenge ourselves, ask God for his faith, because we recognize the more we commit to, the more supply that comes there. But what if Abraham, what if Nehemiah didn't ask? In the same way, when we commit to great needs of others, we expect great supply. Secondly, commitment to the cause of Nehemiah. It brought great increase in his life, great increase. He wasn't a man of influence, but he grew in influence. He's a person we read today for to understand great leadership. And what we understand from this in his life as well is that we learn that increase is found not in comfort, but in challenge. It wasn't comfortable for Nehemiah to go before the king and ask him. It was a challenge. It challenged his faith. It challenged probably his fears. But he increased in influence. He increased in all areas, not in comfort, but in challenge. And we understand that physically, of course. You know, if I sit on the couch and never move a muscle, my muscles deteriorate. They have to be challenged. They have to, you know, I'm not getting into the science of how muscles break apart and rebuild and all that. I'm just saying we have to be challenged. We increase not in comfort, but in 
in challenge. And here's a key that I put on screen. We must live by conviction, not by comfort. In other words, we must live conviction-driven, not comfort-driven. And, and let me say, I like comfort as much as the next guy. I really do. But I'm saying it, 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 growth or increase comes living by conviction, not, not by comfort, but by conviction. And I tell you, you know, I think even of this church family. What a wonderful church family we are who stood by us for the last year and a half and continues to do that with such wonderful support. And I think, you know, last year when the opportunity came to bring, you know, when our constitutional rights as a church family were being infringed upon and, and the opportunity came to bring a litigation or a lawsuit against the Ontario government to say, this isn't right. This is legally improper what you are doing. And we remembered how in the in Paul and his rights as a Roman citizen were being infringed upon. He spoke up and said, this is, being, this is not right. And when the opportunity came, of course, that wasn't comfortable. It was, you know, there was, uh, for beyond the work involved, but there was also just the risk of what will everybody say? Will everybody turn on the church? And what will the, you know, et cetera, go on and on and on and on. So it wasn't comfortable. The, the reason of doing it wasn't for comfort's sake, but there was a conviction that, that this is not right. This is not, this is not helpful for the gospel. Is there not a cause like David said? But in that in that conviction-driven motivation instead of comfort-driven motivation, the influence of this church family has grown. I tell you, people have been calling from around the country saying, we've heard of what's going on and we celebrate you. In fact, people are now joining the church because they've heard of the convictions that this church has for the cause of Jesus Christ and for the cause of the gospel. Again, not comfort, but conviction. And I tell you what, it has been a wonderful delight to be, to, to, and I'm talking to our church family now, such support and such love. I'm talking to you, and I expect great influence expanding in your personal life as well. I'm not just talking about the corporate family. I'm talking about the individ, your individual life uh, as well. We see that in Nehemiah, he grew in influence. And thirdly, we see a commitment to the cause in Nehemiah's life. It brought great transformation. I mean, great transformation. It's in the commitment to the cause where the ordinary is transformed into extraordinary. And again, it just takes the willing heart. Both Nehemiah and David, the key, the, the similarity was they were simply willing. David, he wasn't the most trained soldier. He wasn't the most senior. He was just willing. And in Nehemiah, was there not a prophet? Was there not a rich person? Was there not a king who could have rebuilt that wall? It had been down for 60 years. But it took a willing slave to get it done. That's all it takes is a, is a willing heart that releases this transformation, this increase. A commitment to the cause will take the ordinary person and take them to do, help them to do extraordinarily, extraordinary things. And I, even in my own life, you know, I think of how, you know, at the years, number of years back now, and, you know, and I was asked to preach and I fainted. I certainly, you know, I didn't have, you know, rather ordinary, if you could say. But I thank God I had one thing going for me. I, I had many things in that sense, other people helping me. But in, the, in my own ability, I see myself as such lacking. But, but I had a willingness and I have seen how a willingness will take an extraordinarily ordinary person, I'm talking about myself, and help them to do, and I do, I do believe this, really extraordinary things. To me, it's extraordinary that I can communicate to you today, be a pastor of this church today, preach like I am today, to you today. Uh, you tell me 15 years ago, it would not have been possible, but a commitment to the cause, just a willingness, will transform the most ordinary of individuals into an extra, to help them to live an extraordinary, extraordinary life. Can I ask you? in 2021 first of all can I say the cause of Jesus Christ remains today the same cause of why he died rose again the same cause of why what he gave his disciples that cause remains today and for us today as believers to stand together to build his church to make his name known far and wide the cause of Christ remains today is 2021 the right time maybe not are we the right people who knows but it's a willing heart, and a willing heart, there's no telling what God can do. A commitment to the cause, a people who are committed to the cause of Christ, there's no telling what can be done. Greatness is found in the cause. Greatness is found for David, for Nehemiah, for Abraham, and for you, your life, your family, greatness is found in the cause of Christ. A pa great passion, a great faith, a great influence, a great increase in the commitment 
to the cause. In 2021, is there somebody you can help defeat their giant? Is there a wall that you can rebuild? Oh, I tell you, this church family, we, and I thank God, and maybe I'm probably talking to many of you who already are involved in volunteering, but I ask every one of you watching today, every one of us watching today, this church family, like never before, needs individuals who are committed to the cause, willing to volunteer time, sacrifice time, and energy, commitment to the cause of Christ. Very practically speaking, maybe you want to be a greeter, an usher, work in the media team. Maybe you want some of our gospel booklets to hand out in the community. Maybe you want to become, maybe you want to become a mate, part of our maintenance team or working in the mail department or on the phones. Or, uh, and there's so many other areas. I don't want to get into the weeds of all of the areas right now, but I believe something is rising in every heart and saying, I'm committed to the cause. Yes, the global cause of Christ, but to the local cause through the local church, I'm committed to the cause of Christ. You might say this isn't necessarily the right time. It's never the right time. You might say I'm, not, I'm probably not the right person person, Nathan, none of us are really the right person. In fact, that's the right attitude that we want here at Celebration Church. So I exhort each of us, would you allow the Spirit of God to stir you today to take action? Here's how you can take action. And I'm not done. Pastor Peter's off to my right here, and he's going to do the Holy Communion, and Megan's coming up in a, in a moment's time. But put up my email right now. This is my personal email. Email me today. You say, you know what, Nathan? I don't know what area, but I want to do something. Even if you say, I can't get out of my house right now. I want, and we've had so many people during this lockdown saying, I'm just, I can't get out of the house right now, Nathan. Maybe you're elderly, but I'm going to phone or I'm going to care for people. I'm going to help people. So many ways. Be involved in something. There's greatness. You have a great life. Every one of us, there's a great life that God has called us to in the cause of Christ. Amen. Lastly, before I pass it to Pastor Peter, I mentioned before that the cause, our cause, is to make the love of Christ known, his saving grace, his forgiveness, and this new life available in Christ. That is the cause of Christ. And maybe you're watching today, and you've never received his life. You've never received his forgiveness. Can I invite you to today? That is the purpose of the gospel today. That's the purpose why Jesus died, to give you his life, his forgiveness, and his grace. And there's a new spiritual life available for you. And would you pray with me right now? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you love me, that you gave, my li gave your life, and that you rose again. And right now, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your grace. I receive new life in your life. Jesus, make me new. Thank you for loving me in Jesus' name. And Jesus, I declare you are my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, it's been my privilege to pray with you today. It's such a wonderful thing. The scripture says all of heaven rejoices right now. And I invite you right now to just go to our website and to request some free material uh, to let you know of this wonderful gift that you've received uh, in Christ Jesus today. It's a wonderful gift. You started a new journey, an exciting journey of faith with Christ. And so go ahead and request that uh, information on the screen. And as I said, Pastor Peter, come back to me just for a moment. Put up my email one more time. I want to hear from you today. I tell you, you know, I understand 2020 is such a time and you know, we'd have every excuse just to, you know, just to think about my problems. And I tell you, Nehemiah, if anyone could have just thought about us, and we're not denying problems. And by the way, we have prayer meetings, and we love you, we pray for you. We're, but I can think of no better way to rise up out of our problems than by taking on the cause of some, someone else, a cause greater than ourselves. We need causes greater than ourselves. It, it's how we rise up out of our own circumstances and our own challenges. And so when I thought of this message, should I really preach great in the cause in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of you know, all these lockdowns, and you know people are hurting. And I know people are hurting. That's why we pray, and that's why we'll partake in the Holy Communion. And we believe that you'll be healed in your body if you're suffering. Remember, God needs a great you, great in health, great in faith, great in love. And so, but while he's supplying, we also give out. Like the Sea of Galilee, receiving supply and then giving out to others. We must be like the Sea of Galilee, receiving and giving, receiving and giving. And I'm not just talking about finance, although that's an area. I'm talking about this rich supply of his favor, his life, his love, and then giving it to others. We can't be like the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea just sees but never gives out and as a result it's just dead no my friend I know and I know you're watching today 
because something with inside of you is connected and clicked and you want to be a part of it. So email me, reach out. Even if you don't say, I don't know where I want to be involved, let me know. Put it up one more time. Uh, email me and say, I just want to be involved somewhere, Nathan. Even if it's in a prayer team, I want to be involved. Email, I want to hear from you. It's my personal email. I'll get it from you. But right now, Pastor Peter to my right, Megan's coming up. What a, so many great things happening in the service. But over to you, Pastor Peter. Well, thank you, Nathan. It's so important to hear teaching on commitment. I like that word. Uh, you know, sometimes we want things really fast, but, but the great things in life happen in a process. And commitment is a process word. You could say probably that a very large portion of your life could be summed up in the commitments you made. I know I could say that. Uh, you know, I, I asked him to put a little statement on the screen there. Uh, covenantal or universal? Where does tithing fit in? Sometimes I hear people say, well, the tithing principle, which is giving 10%, of whatever increase you have in your life, whatever income, is an old covenant, it belongs to that time of the law of Moses. Others differ and say it belongs in the new covenant. Let me, let me point this out, single out these two words, covenantal versus universal. You know, many things are covenantal in the Bible. For example, the temple in Jerusalem is, is clearly the old covenant. The new covenant is that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we have a stark difference, the ark. We have the ark in the old covenant. Well, in the new covenant, Jesus Christ is the ark. Uh, you have the utensils mentioned in the book of Hebrews that are clearly locked into the old covenant. And when we're not looking about purifying utensils today in our worship. So certain things belong either just in the old covenant or the new covenant. But then there are some things that are universal. For example, prayer is universal. You know, even though they prayed in a certain way under the law of Moses and we pray a certain way, even long before the law of Moses was there, people prayed forgiveness of sin. Oh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they received forgiveness of sin. It was, and they lived long before the old covenant. So there are many things. Worship, for example, is universal. And I would put tithing in the same category. Uh, tithing is not introduced to us as a part of the law of Moses, and that's why the question is irrelevant. Is it the Old Covenant or the New Covenant? This is a universal principle. And, and, and whether, but it's not under force. It's not mandated. It's not, so to speak, with a gun to your head. We do it voluntarily and celebratory. And that's why Tida and I have decided to, to worship God with, with tithes and to do more than that. Others, if you haven't decided that, God's not mad at you. But I tell you, I think you're missing out on a blessing. I think you are just like the same as, as if you say, well, I don't have to pray anymore. Well, you know, you can make that point, I suppose, but I think you're missing out. And so I'm so glad that we have committed to at least the same as the folks did when they were under that religious system because we believe there's a blessing in it. And so I very much claim Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8, where it says that here mortal people, mortal people receive the tithe, but there Jesus receives it. So you're watching at home right now. So when you're going to, in a moment, do a, an e-transfer or you're going to give online at TICC.ca or we're going to give you all that in a moment, all the options, then, then mortal men, mortal people working in the bank, mortal uh, uh, secretary here, uh, accounting person in the ministry, they will see to it that the money goes into the right account, into the right account. Mortal people are handling it. When you receive an income tax receipt at the end of the year, mortal people are, are sending that to you or giving that receipt to you. But here's the beautiful thing. I'm not so much thinking about the mortals involved. I'm thinking about Jesus Christ being the high priest of our tithes and offerings. And so today I invite you, if you've never tried this, it sounded too scary. I don't know, how could I do that? You'll find out as millions have, that when you put God first, you take the first little skinny dime on every dollar or whatever amount, you may want to do twice that or half of that, whatever. You start honoring God. And you know something? You will begin to realize blessing is flowing. Father, I thank you for the grace to take this step. I thank you for all those who are already involved in your program of finance, God. I thank you for your blessing to them. And for those who are just stepping into it, uh, seeing that this is a universal principle, 
a, a blessing for people. I thank you for the faith to begin today in Jesus' name and to receive from this day forward increase. So, so you can see on the screen there how you can participate in giving. There's many different ways that we do it now that we, most of us didn't know a couple of years ago how to do this. Uh, you can do e-transfer. You can do uh, uh, text give. You can mail your check. You can phone it in. You can give online at www.ticc.ca slash give. And then for those who are around the world, we have another screen. Uh, and I'll go back to the Toronto screen in a moment, but here you can participate all over the world. You can uh, uh, type in give.peteryungren.org. In Canada, you can do e-transfers. You see that here, PayPal, US dollars, Euro currency. Let's go back to the Toronto screen because this is really, uh, in, in Toronto, we have, we have so many people, we, we, we need your help. We need you to keep our church strong. And I believe we are a good storehouse, a place of seeding and a place of feeding. We feed, as you've heard, good feeding from Pastor Nathan today, but we also seed to the world. And, and we try to give you a little glimpse of that. So go ahead and give right now. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. And as you're doing all that, uh, put the screen up for just one more second because I'm going over to Megan Thurber. I believe she's waiting on one of the other sets we have here. So Megan, over to you right now. Thank you, Pastor Peter. According to the Global Child Forum, one of the most damaging legacies from the lockdowns due to the COVID-19 pandemic is said to be the impact on young people. Some epidemiologists have called it the shadow pandemic, which highlights the unintended consequences of the lockdowns on society. Domestic abuse, social isolation, loneliness and lack of access to education are some of the reasons why STATS Canada lists young people aged 15 to 24 at greatest risk of experiencing traumatic mental effects during the lockdowns. 36% of young people said they're extremely concerned about family stress and maintaining social ties with loved ones. Over a year ago, when the pandemic started, our Celebration Church youth team expanded their ministry outreach beyond the regular Friday gatherings to include small groups on Zoom. Here are some of our youth leaders describing their experience over the last year. Hi, Celebration Church and Hi, Rain Toronto. My name is Carrie, and I just want to share really, really briefly about our Rain um, Thursday night, 9 p.m. discipleship group on Zoom. When we gather, each of us comes with, we just share, you know, how um, how the video, how the preach has impacted us and what we've learned from it. And it's amazing to hear that. And then, and then on top of that, after we share that, then we each submit like something that we want prayer for, and then we pray for each other. And and then after that, we all just share how God has been blessing us in the week. So we all give a praise report. It's pretty cool. You know what, what's so amazing about this, guys? It's amazing to see how youth have put aside time to come to talk about and discuss Jesus and just to see how the Holy Spirit is working in their lives. And you know what's amazing about this? You know what's really amazing? This is not just um, a social group. It's not just a social group, not at all. It's a place where the Holy Spirit is manifested and he's there. And I don't know, maybe it's because we've persisted for over a year, but now when we arrive, when like when we gather, he's there. Like you can feel his presence and it's so tangible. And how do we know the Holy Spirit is there? Because lives are being um, visibly changed, visibly um, and uh, just visibly changed. And it's amazing to see. Take care. So one benefit that I can think of when I think of the Zoom rooms is that it's such a safe space where I know for myself personally, and I think others would agree is that Whatever it is that we're meditating on that week, or just in general, we're able to bring it to um, the group. And if it's something that we're believing for, we can share it with others and they can hold us accountable and remain in faith for it. And that's just what I love about it. It's a space where there's constant laughs and maybe even a few tears. But that's what's great about it. We're just able to share um, whatever is on our hearts and grow in the Holy Spirit. And that's what I love about it. Hi, my name is Jazz and I'll be talking about Thursday night Zoom calls at Rain 
Now, Thursday night Zoom calls are a lot of fun because before that, you get to watch um, a sermon that has to do with Christianity, faith, things to learn, all of that stuff. And afterwards, you get to join into the Zoom call and talk about it amongst each other, like what you learned from it and what you can do and what you can apply into your life um, through it. And after that, you get to pray with each other. And I really think that prayer at Rain Youth is like, it's really special um, because it's just you get to gather with each other and just be just like be there in the presence of God and it's it's really amazing so yeah I hope that you join in and yeah bye hey, it's Matt here um, just here to encourage some of our youth and young adults if you're not meeting up with us in person as we are back I encourage you to join us on Zoom. There are tons of benefits, but one of the, the two main ones is that you're able to be able to connect with us still, right? In a time where there's a lot of changes happening, it's important to be able to connect and you're and you will for sure be challenged on a day-to-day -day basis from our, our once a week Zoom calls to to live out in God's goodness. Thank you, Celebration Church family, for making this possible. Without your support, your prayers, your love, this would not be possible. You are bringing both spiritual and mental health for some of our most vulnerable in our society. You helped our youth expand during a lockdown when they would have every reason to hold back. Thank you, church, for your love, your prayers, and your support. Now let's get ready to participate in Holy Communion with Pastor Peter. I have the bread and the cup here with me and maybe you have the emblems in front of you where you're watching at home. And so I declare, join me in faith right now that these emblems, this bread and this cup is dedicated uh, to the Lord's Supper, to the Holy Communion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we take communion every week. Uh, I, I know some have drifted away from that, but I think it's so central. It constantly reminds us of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And you know, when I, we started to do that every week, I become amazed, and it's been a number of years now, how there's fresh thoughts all the time about the Lord's table. Here's a thought that I've never expressed before. Have you thought of the human participation in the Lord's Supper? Jesus said, take bread and wine. You know, what is bread made of? It's made of grain. So humans take grain and they make it into bread. What is the wine made of? From a grape. So humans pick the grapes and over a process it turns into wine. Why didn't Jesus say, take grain and grape? I mean, we could have said that would have been really holy. I mean, God makes the grain. No human can make the grain. God makes the grape. Why didn't Jesus say, and the grape is made, of course, without, in the sense, it's, it's the life of the vine. Why didn't Jesus say, take uh, grain and grape? He said, take bread and wine. And, and I submit to you that there is a human involvement whereby faith we partake. We have that God has invited us to play a part in this of receiving that which is grace. And it's 100% His grace, but, but the receiving, the responding to it and the participation in it is our part. So today, when we take the bread, I urge you, participate. Believe in your heart that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Believe in your heart that he took your sickness and carried your pain. Believe that. Let's take the bread right now. Then after the supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood as often as you drink this. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's participate, not just by drinking, and participate that way, but in faith, in expectancy. We say, I know Jesus, what your blood has done for me is 100% free, but I actively receive it. I actively participate and receive every blessing that's mine. Let's partake. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, take a minute and just stand up where you are, or sit back where you are, and just say, thank you, Jesus. 
for everything that you have provided. And I actively receive that. You know, the word receive is like take a hold of. In football, in American football, not European, but the American football, there's a, a term, a player called the wide receiver. And that person is not just standing with his arms folded. Actually, he's receiving, grabbing that ball. And so I say, God's blessing, God's abundance has been released to you. Now reach up and take it. We want to hear what God has done for you. Pastor Nathan gave his personal email address earlier, nathant at tic.ca. How wonderful that is. You can contact him also what the Lord is doing for you in your life. Wonderful. And remember, we are still having in-person services, following all the guidelines in the province of Ontario where we are located. Uh, but I'm sure you'll hear about that in a moment because right now I'm going back to Megan Thurber. We have just a couple more things for you. First, we're going to go to this week's video announcements with Elizabeth. And then right after that, Nathan and I will be back uh, to share something with you. So let's go to Elizabeth right now. Celebration Church, here are this week's three things you need to know. One, the scripture exhorts us to bring our prayers to God boldly, expecting help in time of need. He desires to be good to us. Would you submit your prayer request for our weekly prayer rally, Mondays at 7 p.m. on Facebook? Also, would you join our prayer meetings Mondays at 7 The scriptures tell us where two or three are gathered in his name, there is he. Email your prayer requests to prayer at ticc.ca. We hope to see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. for Miracle Monday online. Second, the scripture tells us that when we meditate on God's word revealed through Christ Jesus, we grow and live victorious lives. Would you join us Tuesday at 7 p.m. online for Tuesday Bible Study? You can join from our website and on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And finally, if you are new to Celebration Church, we invite you to get your free welcome gift a hardcover copy of Pastor Peter Youngren's amazing book, The Faith That Works. If you are attending in person today, visit our welcome center after the service. And if you are attending online today, go to our website, www.ticc.ca slash new and request your copy. Thank you for joining us today. Now back to the service. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you for joining with us today. Absolutely, and you know, Elizabeth just mentioned in-person services, and here in Toronto, uh, in-person services are happening this week, just like last week, and I know there was some confusion with all the different announcements being made uh, by the government, but the government has said here in Ontario that we are able to continue meeting uh, capacity levels, same as we had at Easter, in fact, same as we had last week, and so we'll keep doing that, keep following the rules, but I think maybe they've recognized how good a job we've been doing at that, Megan, and you know, following all the sanitization rules on a Sunday. So we're still open. Uh, we're open today. We're open next Sunday. And so, you know, we invite you to come on out and see us. I think we have a pretty good time, don't we, Megan? I know our kids love running around there on the front row so, so very much. And uh, yeah, I don't know if how much they like the masks, but they, they do their part as well. But anyway, we, we so much invite you and there's something about coming together like that. But again, we're just excited. We're, we're honored that you've been with us today and we believe that God is with you in your home. Let's just agree together now in prayer. Father, I thank you for every person watching today. I thank you that your presence is with them right now, touching every person's heart, mind. Like Pastor Peter prayed for just a moment ago for bodies, Lord. I thank you that you're touching every person in the area of their need. You know where every person's need is, and you care for that need, and you meet them now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, we love you. We pray for you. We want to hear from you, so reach out. Let us know you're watching. God bless you, and have a great day.